SIPOC is the high level or the helicopter view of the process. So what does helicopter view means? This means we are looking all the process and different features of the company or different walks of the company from a wide angle or from the high level so that we can easily identify all the company processes or we can get the glance of the company or the process operation. If it is SIPOC of the company, we get the glance of the company. If it is SIPOC of a certain process, then we get a glance of that particular process. Generally, SIPOC is used for the improvement of certain processes inside the company. SIPOC helps in easy identification of what the project needs from the suppliers and what customers expect from the processes. SIPOC describes the scope of whole team of the project in a broader term and it thus helps in easy identification of the gaps in the project. Let us learn about these acronyms. S stands for the suppliers. I stands for the inputs. P for the process. O for the outputs. And C for the customers. Let us learn this with an example. We are trying to improve the quality of one pharmaceutical product. Suppose the pharmaceutical product is the morphine tablets, which is used to relieve the pain. So there is a supplier. There is the input. That means the raw materials that the suppliers provide. Note that there might be many suppliers and there might be many inputs from these many suppliers. The third is the process that is converting the input to the output or converting the raw material to the valuable product. Output is the product or service that customers wants to see. And finally, there is the customer. So with SIPOC diagram or SIPOC matrix, you see all this process right from the supplier to the customers from a helicopter view or from a wide angle. Suppliers are the persons or organization that provides input to the processes. There may be many suppliers for a certain product or services that customers expect. Inputs are the resources added to the process by the suppliers. These are the resources which goes to the processes in order to form the output. Processes are the functions which converts the inputs to the outputs. Outputs are the services or resources generated by the processes and customers are the persons or the organizations receiving the output. So this is what SIPOC means. Suppliers, inputs, processes, outputs and customers. First of all, the suppliers provide the raw material. There may be different suppliers for different raw materials or different inputs and these inputs or raw materials go to the process. There might be different steps or different ways to convert the input to the output. In the processing function, we add the value to the products or services. So these are the value adding activities. Processes can give requirement and feedback to the suppliers. When you found some quality issues in your products or services, you can give feedback to the suppliers and suppliers will receive that feedback and it has to send you the type of raw material that you want for your process. Similarly, the process converts to the outputs which is received by the customers. The customers take your product and based on the value the products and services provide to the customers, they give you feedbacks. The feedback may be verbal or it may be in the sales form. If there is high number of sales, the customers might be happy with your product. Ultimately, there can be some minor flaws or major flaws and customers want it to be improved in your products and services. So you should take that feedback from the customers and convert it into the action with the help of your processes. That means you have to improve your processes in such a way that customers feel happy about your service features or the products. So SIPOC works in the feedback loop. Now let us see some of the requirements before we draw the SIPOC matrix or SIPOC diagram. The first requirement of SIPOC is there should be definite start and end point of the process. Suppose if the start or the definite start is making an order to the supplier and the end point is taking feedbacks from the customers, we have definite start and definite stop point of the processes. 
you should define in the SIPOC what's your start point and what's your end point of the process. The second requirement is we have to identify key process matrices. If you don't know about the process matrices yet, please visit the lecture on process matrices. These are the terms that correlate the voice of customers with the action of the company. The third requirement is to identify components of the process and their owners. We should understand the components of the process, that means steps of the process and their owners, that means who is running that process. The third is to identify all suppliers and their inputs to the process. We should also identify all the output that we can receive. That means we should have a sound knowledge of the inputs, outputs and the process as a whole when drawing the SIPOC. Then another requirement is to establishing all the customers and stakeholders requirements. That means we should know beforehand what are the requirements of the customers and what are the specific requirements of the stakeholders. Stakeholders are people, organization that is affected by change in your products or services. Now let us see the steps of drawing the SIPOC. The first step is defining the process to be reviewed and its scope. Here in our example of manufacturing the morphine tablets, the scope of the project can be defined as this map describes the process step for the manufacture of morphine tabs for the medical purpose. So we should know exactly what we are doing, what's the scope behind the SIPOC matrix or SIPOC diagram that we are ultimately designing. Second step is setting the boundary. That means we should set the definite start and end point as we already discussed. But the boundaries should not be placed very far and the process should be as simple as possible and it should be able to be mapped in the process map. If it is very very complex one and if you cannot map the process inside the SIPOC diagram then it's of no use for drawing the SIPOC particularly the process we should be able to draw it with the simple flowcharts. The third step is the identification of the process owner. Now who is a process owner? Process owner is the person responsible ultimately for the process and its output. He is a key decision maker and he will allocate and control the manpower, machine, input, resources and the finances of the company. So we should identify the process owner. We should know exactly who is doing what job. Fourth step is identification of the process requirements. We should identify the key process matrices, all the suppliers and the inputs and establish all the customers and stakeholders requirement and also identify all the outputs that they receive. We already studied about the SIPOC requirement and the fourth step is also the same. We should identify the process requirements before starting the SIPOC. The fifth stage is brainstorming the process steps. There are different ways of brainstorming. We can use software and mind mapping tools. We can also benchmark. Benchmark means studying the successful products and services and incorporating the values that made those products or services successful in the market. Benchmarking doesn't mean copying. The another step is the drawing of the affinity diagram. Affinity means the degree of closeness or the relationship. This is also done in the brainstorming session and in this course you will also study how to draw the affinity diagram. We can also gather the voice of all the stakeholders in the brainstorming session. Sixth step is to organize the process steps logically. We can see the process layout. We can study if there is any defect or if there is any flaw in the process layout itself. If there is flaw in the process layout, it will affect the output and customer satisfaction as well. So we have to be much careful whether we are using the right process or not. We can use uh, various process mapping tools for this. For example, we can use the value stream mapping to get the wide or helicopter view of the improvements that should be done in any process. The seventh is we should number the process and last but not the least after drawing the SIPOC diagram we should validate whether our notion or our concept of the SIPOC our concept of the process that we are running is exactly the same running on the floor. Gemba work is used to describe personal observation of the work where the work is happening to see the performance of the products or the services. You can validate 
with your direct observations and after that you can diagram the process we should make the process as simple as possible to reduce the complications we can use rectangles for major process diagonals for making decisions and arrow for the steps now this all may seem quite complicated so let me explain it with the diagram of SIPOC suppose we are taking a simulated case study of the pizza restaurant SIPOC looks something like this there are suppliers input process output and customers there may be different suppliers here the suppliers for the mushroom is mushroom house for the cheese there is dairy suppliers etc also note that there may be suppliers of other materials also for example there may be suppliers for the cartoon printing oven and gas that is used in making the pizza and also there may be other assets involved such as payment system telephone and electricity etc and the landlord is also supplier if you do not have your own space you are renting so the input becomes the space and the supplier is the landlord so while defining the suppliers suppliers are not only those which uh, provide the raw material these are also those parties which involve in the payment system your landlord electricity telecom etc and the inputs of the suppliers are the raw materials such as mushroom cheese and other materials that we need such as box oven gas etc and also we need the electricity cell phone or say credit card processing that is required for going to the process and space etc that is required to run the process and we also learned about the process the process should be simple as possible we can take the simple flowchart symbols here the flowchart is very very simple we take the order we make the pizza and we ask the customers whether he wants the home delivery or not if he wants the home delivery we pack the pizza and we deliver if he doesn't want the home delivery we just deliver or we stop the customers in the restaurant itself and then we collect the payment so this is the whole process of the pizza restaurant we are talking about the output are the different types of pizza there may be different types of pizza according to the customers expectations or the voice of customers there might be the pork pizza mushroom pizza and there might be the soft drink combo pack party pack or special pizza and you may have different kinds of customers the customers may be employee of the near warehouse suppose you may also get the home orders through online your customers may also be the college students or the party hosts so there can be different customers so this in general gives us a helicopter view of the process this is not a detailed view of the process if you want to go into the detailed view you have to draw the process map particularly the value stream map gives you the detailed explanation and detailed picture of all the individual processes and also the different stocks and amount and different functions of the people SIPOC is a more general and the helicopter view of the process.